told Brother Charles, I'm just going to let him work, amen. Yeah, you say, preacher, this song's all messed up. I'm just going to let him work. No I ain't, there ain't nobody, I ain't going to program this thing out. People already know what they need to do this morning. I shouldn't have to beg them. Amen, I shouldn't have to pull you. You know what you need. You know exactly what you stand in need of. Amen, if you're not where you should be. Do you understand this thing's more than just coming to Sunday morning church? Somebody help me right there. I'm about to hit on some things a lot of people ain't going to like. Amen. But I've seen a generation we're let, sitting here losing right under our eyes. Amen. I'm sitting, I'm seeing it while we're playing church. Somebody help me now. Am I on something, Mary Larry? I believe I'm going to get on some solid ground right here. Amen. We're sitting here playing church. And we ain't got a bit of passion in our souls. We ain't got a burden in our hearts. We've got so much. We're so much in love with this this world and the things of this world and the pleasures of this world. Amen. We can't even, when we come to church, we can't feel nothing. And when we do come to church, we get uncomfortable when we're there. Then we want to get mad at somebody. We want to get mad at the preacher. Well, he's just trying to hurt me. He's trying to hurt my feelings. It ain't the preacher. It's the Holy Spirit. You already know what you need to do. You already know that you ain't where you should be with God. Somebody help me. You ain't where you should be with God. I'm not always where I need to be with God. And I have to go and repent. Amen. But I like what one of them said already. We're already comparing ourselves to somebody. Well, I'm not as bad as that one. I'm not as least I ain't like that one. I'm here to tell you God knows. Let me, can I say something and be so kind to say it this morning? Has God done anything for anybody in this building this morning? Has God blessed anybody in this building this morning? All the things that God's given you, all the blessings that God has handed out to you. Let me say it, you didn't earn it. You certainly didn't deserve it. But God in his love and his compassion, you may be a hard worker, but God's the one give you the job. Somebody say amen. Hey, I'll even go a step further in the abilities that you have. God give them to you. You didn't earn those abilities. The abilities that you have, the talents that you have, God didn't just, amen, he, he give them to you. And it, now I'm going to hit you right here, right here. I'm going to get you right here. And it's just as easy as he give them to you, he can take it all away. Do I need to say it again? Do I need to say it again? As easy as he give them to us all, everything he's given us, he can take it away. Tomorrow your world could be turned upside down. Because this is what, if God, if you're not going to give God your life, God will take you down. Huh? 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 Some of us got to stop playing church and get in this thing. Some of us got to get in this church and say, Preacher, I'm going to do something in this church. I won't be involved in this church. I won't be involved in the work of the church. Yeah. Amen. I want to be involved in the work of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we've made ourselves so busy, we've pushed God out of it. Yeah. I'm going to have to have just a little bit of help right there. Yeah. Maybe I just need to stay right there and dig and plow a little deeper right there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Maybe I need to hit some of that hard dirt. Dig a little deeper. Get a plow, brother. Amen. Get that big John Deere tractor up here. Let you drive and drag it down. That plow deep in the ground. Amen. Amen. We're so busy in our lives. We've pushed God out. And say, God, I'm going to give you Sunday morning. And I might give you Sunday night. And I ain't going to give you Wednesday night. I ain't going to give you that. That's me time. Huh? Huh? I believe I'm, I believe I fit something. So either what's going to happen, Brother Charles, they're all going to get a group of them together because they're mad at the preacher this morning and they're going to go talk to the men. Amen. And hey, if that's what y'all want to do, if that's what y'all want to do, I'll take my Bible in my hand and I'll go down the road. Because I'll tell you this right now, Brother Rodney, God will let me preach somewhere. I'm done playing church. I've seen a generation we're losing. I've seen it with my eyes. 
And until God opens your heart, God broke my heart this week. Hey man, over a generation we're losing. Well, preacher, I'll just pack up and go somewhere else. I ain't trying to run nobody off. I ain't trying to do that, Brother Ronnie. I want to get under the fire, don't you, brother? I want to thank God. Hey man, if you're 60 and above, stand up. Stand up if you're 60 and above. 60 and above, stand up. If you're 60 and above, stand up. I know there's more in here, people 60 and that. Listen, some of you don't want to tell your age. I was going to do something nice for you. That's all I was going to do. I thank God for every one of you. I thank God for every one of you. Can I say that? I thank God for every one of you. As I thanked them on Thursday night, thank you all for telling me about Jesus. Thank you all for caring about me enough and praying for me to tell me about. I didn't even know you were 60 yet, Brother Larry. You young very well. <laughs> hey man. Hey man. Hallelujah. Thank you for staying in the fight. Thank you for staying in a fight and telling this generation, telling my generation about Jesus, that there's something real about it. But listen, this generation, Brother Steve, if the Lord tarries is coming, it's going to be gone. Huh? I was going to do this Tuesday night, but you know what happened? I didn't get Thursday night. I didn't get to do it. Hey, man, Brother Bar- Miss Barbara, Brother Ronnie, Brother Kenneth, Brother Roy, if the Lord tarries is coming, Brother Charles, we're all going to pass away, that generation. Hey, man, we'll be coming and visiting your grave songs. Y'all be in heaven rejoicing. I'm again, let's give these 60-year-olds and higher a big hand this morning for staying in the fight. Huh? Stay in the fight. Y'all be seated. There's that generation. There's that generation. And I want everybody from 25 and 59 to stand up. 25 to 59 to stand up. All right. Hey. You're that middle generation. It's falling on us now. Did you see? It's falling on us now to tell our people. Tell them about Jesus. It's on us to get on fire for Jesus. Amen. They fought the fight. That don't mean they've quit. You're still in it. You're still fighting to the last breath. But it's on us, Brother Charles. It's on us to tell these young people there's something about having the power of God on their life. Better than have, hey, I want them to have the best education. I want them to excel in everything that they can. But if they don't got Jesus, it don't mean nothing. If they don't have Jesus on their life, it don't mean a thing. Hey, man, if they wake up in hell one day. Hey, man, now y'all sit down. Now I want everybody 24 and younger to stand up. 24 and younger to stand up. Now look. Here's that next generation. Here's another generation. A generation, as I told them on Tuesday night, Thursday night, is about 40 to 45 years. Here's this next generation coming up. And when we're gone, this is the generation that don't know nothing. Amen. They're not going to know anything about the power of God. Unless we give them something. Unless we should. They ain't going to know nothing about being faithful to God. Somebody help me now. If they don't see us being faithful to God, you think they're going to be faithful? You think they're going to stay in it? You want to know why Brother Larry churches, amen, are struggling and they only got 20, 15, 10 people in them? We're losing the generations. Folks, whether you like it or not, I'm preaching this morning. I'm preaching. I'm preaching is, hey, sometimes you have to dig deep. Hey, man, to get it turned around. Jesus had to preach hard. Jesus had a lot of hard sayings. They didn't like it. Hey, man, but boy, it turned them around. Either you can eat it or you can spit it out. You can do one or two things. You can go out the same condition as you and say, I could care less if I got this. You know what I'm going to preach on? I don't know if I'm going to get to preach it today. I'm probably just going to preach it. Is that all right? It's just 1115. You here, I might as well preach. Hey, man, if you need to go to the bathroom, you can go. I can preach over you going to the bathroom, getting you some water. You know what we've done? We've put a do not disturb sign on our hearts. 
You know what those do not disturb signs are at the hotels? You put that on there and say, I don't want nobody to come in here. I'm comfortable. Leave it alone. You know what we've done? We've closed our hearts. Jake, we've closed our hearts. Say, I put a do not disturb. I'm satisfied. I'm apathetic. I'm lethargic. I'm going to live in mine. And leave, it, leave me alone. Do not disturb. God, I don't want to do any more for you. And God may have a lot more for you. You just ain't got time for him. You say, preacher, I'm too busy. Then you just convicted yourself right there. You said it. You are too busy with this world. There's some things you need to give over this morning and say, Lord, I'm going to go with you. I want the fire on these kids. I want the fire on these young people. Miss Felicia, I'm praying God's called some of these young boys to preach. I am. I'm praying God calls them. It ain't my call, but it's his. But I'm praying it. Hey, man, I'm praying God uses these young ladies. If, you, if you're a parent in here and you don't God using your kid, you ought to be in this altar. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself this morning. I'm telling you, God done something for me this week, Brother Ronnie. I'm just going to preach. Brother Donnie told me the same thing Friday night. He says, you know what, son of mine, I'm just going to go and preach. Hey, man, hallelujah. You don't experience what we'd experience this week, Brother Ronnie, if God didn't do something. Miss Felicia, that just wasn't put on. That wasn't a show what happened this week. God done something in people's hearts this week. Now it's up to us to see what we can do about it. Get ready to sing. Hey, Amen. And, and if God does something right here, hey, man, I'm going to let him do it. But you need to come this altar if you need to. Did I give you enough time to sit down? Stand back up. Hey, Amen. Stand back up. You know what you need to do. I, ain't, I didn't try to hurt nobody's feelings this morning, Brother Ronnie. Sometimes we just got to preach and tell it like it is. Hey, man, we're going to lose them. Brother Ronnie, when, you, when you're gone, hey, man, we're going to lose them. We're going to lose them. We're not replacing these that are going on. I want these young people to know something about the power of God in their life. Sing it. Don't, didn't I mention that I love him? He can take it all. Everything that he's give you, he can take it away. Everything. I mean everything. He can take your health away. He can. He can take your home away. He can take your job away. He can take your abilities away. If you ain't going to serve him, he says, well, you ain't going to be no use to me. All these things I've done for you, everything I've done for you, but you won't live for me. You're just giving me two or three hours a week thinking we're doing God a big deal by coming to church. You ought to want to come to church. You ought to want to come to church. If you've lost your want-tos, I've already tell you, you ought to be in this altar this morning. Sing. Sing. I'm going to let him work. Let him do what he needs to do. Go ahead, Brother Steve.
Amen. I want you to listen to me real quickly right now. Brother Rodney, Miss Joyce, amen, she says, Brother Scotty, continue the invitation. There ain't many people with the Holy Spirit will get on somebody. Amen. And tell the preacher, I feel like the invitation needs to keep going on. You want to know why? Because when the Spirit of God gets in the place, do you know some of you are indicting yourself by the face that you have on? You're sitting there this morning, and I know, Brother Charles, some of them are probably mad. Some of them are convicted. The choice is this. I pray just now that God would pressure your spirit and pressure your heart so much. I'm here to tell you, folks, there is something about this thing, and God is calling a people. Do you know there's people in this building this morning need to be saved probably, Brother Charles? There's people probably needs to be saved here this morning. There's young people this morning that need to give their life to Jesus this morning. I'm, I'm talking about none of this funny business out there. I'm talking about having the power of God on their life. Having the anointing on their life. But they're sitting there miserable in their seat. They want me to be quiet. They want me to sit down. They want me to go ahead and have a regular old service. But I'm glad we don't serve just a regular old God. And God knows what he's doing, and I'm just going to let him do it. You say, preacher, I've already prayed down there on that altar. This is what I want you to do this morning. If God tells you to do it, there's people in this building this morning, Miss Susan, that need to come pray. And if you're a child of God and you have a clean heart, I want you to come pray that God will break their hearts. And God will make them move this morning. Come out of your seat. And I want you to follow. Because prayer works, folks. Prayer changes things. It'll turn this church upside down this morning, Brother Rodney. Hey, man, we need to pray. We need to pray this morning. We need to pray to God do something this morning in this house. You say, preach. We need to pray for families in this church. We're seeing a great falling away, Brother Ronnie. We're seeing a great falling away. Hey, man, I don't want to lose them. Do you want to lose them? Are you where you should be with God this morning? Listen to me, young person. Are you where you should be with God this morning? Are you where you should be with God this morning? Are you? Do you truly know if you've been saved this morning? If you say, preacher, I don't feel nothing this morning. I ain't feeling what y'all got this morning. I invite you to this altar this morning. I invite you to this altar this morning. Don't put it off. Don't hold it off. You better get in this thing. This thing's about wrapped up. Y'all got something else y'all sing? Did you already tell him? Amen. Amen. Brother Steve, they're going to do something. I'm going to spend some time on my knees for a little while. But Steve, if I ain't up after this song, just let them keep on singing. I'm going to spend some time, amen, till God breaks some hearts. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost, save no one Christ. Little John said he is precious. By leaning on his bosom, so for a moment may I testify. Did I mention that I love him? How I worship. Make 
walk it up too soon. Amen. How many sermons can be preached about this Jesus? How many songs can be sung about God's Son? So, Brother Charles, we're just going to let him work here just a minute. Can I talk to you for just a minute this morning? If it's all right, let me just talk to you just a bit this morning. Folks are still praying. You can still come pray. Brother Ronnie, am I still doing all right? Am I doing all right? Listen to me. I told them on Thursday night, I said, there, Egypt had the children of Israel in bondage for 350 years. And they went from knowing all about Joseph to nothing about Joseph in 350 years. And I, so I told them, I said, well, preacher, they might have said, well, preacher, that's a long time. But not really. They knew nothing about Joseph. Here's a man that saved that entire continent from starvation. But yet they went from knowing all about him to nothing. 350 years in the whole span of things ain't that long. Because 350 years was just about as long as Jamestown's been founded. And we all know about Jamestown. We all know about George Washington. But when I'm seeing in this country young people that don't know a thing about Jesus, that don't know a thing about God, and yet here we think we're doing God a big favor. You know what Jesus is about to do? God told Moses, he says, you go down there and deliver my people. He says, I'm about fed up with Egypt. And Egypt's the type of the world. I'm telling you how close we're to the end of this thing. And he says, you go down there and you lead them out. He says, and when I lead them out, he man, and what happened at the Red Sea when they all crossed over? What did Egypt try to do? Pharaoh and all his army tried to follow in after them. And what happened? The waters receded. God shut the door on them. We can look back and we might even see one of them out there in the waters drowning and say, Why? Do you think you're out there trying to cause I didn't know Joseph? Because I didn't know Joseph. Listen to me, young person. Listen to me. If you're not where you should be with God this morning, family, you listen to me. If you're not ever where you should be with God this morning and you already know where you should be, God's getting fed up with Egypt. God's getting fed up with Egypt. God's getting fed up with this world and judgment's coming. Judgment's coming to this whole world. Amen. And if you got loved ones that's going not, if they not born again, hallelujah, you better be on his altars praying. If you ain't born again, you better get up here and give your life to Jesus because the judgments are coming. God's getting fed up with Egypt. God's getting fed up. Amen. 
Bible says it's his days and Noah's it days and a lot. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Yeah. Brother Rodney, we'd be foolish to think that it ain't bad. Yeah. I don't like watching the news. But sometimes you got to keep up with it to know what's going on in this old world. Brother Donnie told us some pretty fascinating things on Wednesday night, didn't he? When he's up there preaching. He'd just been in Israel, been in the Holy Land. He said the Dead Sea is receding and around it the, everything's blooming. Talking about the millennial reign of Christ. Folks, we're that close. He said it's blooming. It ain't bloomed in centuries. It's starting to bloom again. What's that tell you? Brother Ralph told me, he said, Jesus is about to come back. People can, I'm going to tell you, it's the same age old story, Miss Joyce. They hear these preachers preaching this, and they, they smirk at it, they laugh at it, mock at it. That's what they did in Noah's day. They'll sit there on the Baptist church pew, and they'll smock, and they'll think it's funny. Amen, they don't think, amen, we've got to, you can make all the plans in your life you want to, honey, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus is soon returning, and if you ain't got it, you get left. You get left. I don't care who your daddy is, I don't care who your mama is, I don't care what preacher you had in the pastorship, amen, I don't, if you ain't got it, you get left. If there's ever a time, Brother David, I, and I, I played that song on Tuesday, Thursday night, I told the church, I said, are y'all ready for one more battle stand? We're what, I believe we've got one more battle stand. I believe God sent a revival to this land one more time because he's getting ready to come back, Brother Michael. And you say, maybe this morning you want to come. Maybe you've already come five times. Maybe you want to come and say, preacher, I want the fire of God on my life. I want, I want the fire on my life. I want the anointing on my life. Do you want it? Don't do you? Let me ask you a question. Hold my glasses before I break them. Do you really want? Now this is heavy right here, Brother Rodney. Do you really want what God has planned for you in your life? Now listen, Brother Rodney, you know as well as I know, preacher, that if you say, Lord, I want you to give me everything, you better be ready because he's going to give you a wagon load of it. And sometimes it's going to get heavy. It'll get heavy. But I'm telling you, there ain't no greater joy than having the full power, the anointing of Jesus on your life. There's nothing better than being filled with the Spirit of God, Miss Joyce. There's nothing better. Amen, I know what it's like. I know what God's done for me in my life. And Brother Rodney, I know how I've let him down. We'd all be foolish and we'd all be liars in here this morning, Miss Deborah, if we didn't say we'd ever let God down. I let him down. But let me ask you, young person. Let me ask you. Do you really believe what we got's real? Huh? Huh? Do you think what's in this building's real? Here's a question I want to ask you. Do you want it? Y'all ready to go home, ain't you? Huh? Y'all ready to go home, ain't you? I'll let your meatloaf burn. Let your bologna spoil. Be good for you. Hey, Amen. We need revival, Brother Ronnie. People don't like this kind of preaching. Huh? They'd have rather got me up there in this town about how to get us through the storm because God's going to get us through the storms. God is going to get us through the valleys because he said he would. And I like preaching on that stuff. But honey, if we don't get where we're living, we, add up, we can just praise God all day long and that ain't going to get us nowhere. Hey man, I want the power of God on my life. I want it on my home. I want it on my children. And hey, and if you truly want it, Brother David, he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. And then you can start seeing God, amen, begin quickly and immediately start seeing changes in your home. He knows this morning. He ain't foolish. He knows where your number one desire is this morning. He knows what your desires are in your life. He knows if, you're not, if he's number one in your life. And he knows if you're number one in your life. Why is it getting quiet in here? 
Huh? Amen. Hey, you can sit there with a preacher. I'm just not going to listen to it. That's fine. That's fine. But it's the truth. And one day, one day, you're going to stand before God Almighty. Brother Scotty won't be standing with you. Husband won't be standing with you. Mom and daddy, you're going to be standing before God Almighty about how you conducted your life as a child of God. And you want to know what, Brother Jake? God don't wipe our tears till after the judgment seat of Christ. You want to know what we're going to be doing, Brother Dave? We're going to be flat on our face. We're going to be flat on face for the things that God told us to do that we said we won't do. That we said, God, don't disturb me. I'm too busy in my life. Don't you know, God, I don't got time for you right now. You know what God's going to do? And this is what's going to be what breaks our heart. It's not going to be the things that we could. But you want to know what's really going to get us weeping at the throne room that day? When God points us at all the souls that we could have won. I'll just hit it right there. You want to know what's going to bring tears to my eyes, Brother Miss Felicia, when I stand before God that day? Is when he points to me all the souls. And I see all the souls that I could have won to him. But I said no. Because I was too busy. Huh? I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you really want the power of God on your life? Do you want God to use you in your job, in your school, in your family? Now's the time to come. Susan, get our girls and get them up here. Get them up here. Amen. Amen. I know you all had a song, Deb. Can you sing it by yourself? Amen. I'm going to get my family up here. Hey man, I'm going to pray over my family. I want God on my life. I want God on my home. I want him on my home. Hallelujah, Brother Ron. There's nothing else I'd rather have. Y'all do what y'all want to do. But do you want the power of God in your life? Do you want to feel it real? Let's all stand up. Hey man, you do what you want. Hallelujah. Hey man, hallelujah. broken mine was mended he became sin now I am clean the cross he carried for my burden the nails that held him set me his life for mine, his life for mine, how could it ever be that he would die, God's son? suffering brought me
last Sunday morning going and getting something more than we expected. Yeah. I believe some of us coming in here this morning got a little bit more right. than we ever expected. Oh, yeah. Now, Brother Rodney, it's what we do with it. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. Now it's what we do with it. That's right, brother. Amen. Now we show and we prove God. Yeah. God, I meant business with you today. Yeah. God, I'm going to live for you better than I've ever lived for you. Right. If you want to know who it is, hey, it is hard and it is difficult in this life. Amen. Yeah. The devil will tempt you. Yeah. But God never will tempt you. That's right. Amen. Right. He'll never tempt you to sin. He may test you. He may try you, but he never will tempt you. No, he won't. Amen. Don't ever say God made me do that. No, no, no. God didn't ever make you do nothing. No, no. God gave you a free moral agent to make your own yeah. decisions yeah. and your own choices. That's right, amen. You made the choice whether or not you wanted to come to this altar and pray and ask God on your life and now on your family's life. You made that choice. You made that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Just like they said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lord. That's right. amen. Amen. As for me and my well, that wife of mine's house, we're going to serve the Lord, Brother Rodney. Yeah. Yeah. Who else want to go? They can go. Who else don't want to go? Yeah. Love that song, Brother Larry. Get up there and say, where are you leading God's house? I love that song. Miss Joyce, get up there. Didn't Miss Deborah and Miss Ruth do a good job yeah. this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't expect to sing that many times this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. They did a great job for the leadership of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I want Brother Larry to sing where he leads our lives. Think about this song. Brother Larry, sing every verse of it. Page 65. Page, let's sing every verse of it. How many of you are glad that you come to the house of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Brother Charles, aren't you glad that we obeyed the Lord this morning? Amen. Hey, I tell you, God's good to us. Amen. 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 Can I try something with you? I believe we're going to try something. We, we, Brother Ted called us on Tuesday night. Did he not teach us? And we've tried it. Let's see. Now, y'all that were at Revival, you'll have to be loud because the rest of us don't know. <laughs> Can y'all promise me you're all going to be loud and do it? Y'all not, you not going to want to do it, don't you? Yeah. All right. All right. Are you ready? All right, Miss Joyce, let's try this one again. Because I want y'all to listen. Listen, listen. All right, here we go. Miss Joyce, get back here. All right, remember? Here we go. All right, be loud so the rest of them hear. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Y'all get it? Pretty good. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Now let everybody hear. God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. good. Oh, man, that's good. <laughs> amen. Now let's go. Huh? You think we didn't do it? But Brother Larry, <laughs> amen, he thinks we didn't do it one more time. I'll, I'll just leave it. All right, here we go. One more time. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Old Testament law, a male in his prime was or twenty pieces of silver. And I said, but a female in her prime was worth thirty pieces of silver. And see, I could have left it at that, Brother Michael, but I just felt like I needed to take a nudge yeah. from him. Yeah. Brother Charles, you heard me. No. Yeah. 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 And I told him, told the women, I said, look at your husband, tell them that you're worth more than they are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will follow. Amen. Then we'll be dismissed.
glad I am. Oh, yes, amen. Sunday school was awful good this morning. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was Sunday school. Amen. Hallelujah. We ain't even dismissed out of Sunday school yet. We ain't started. Yeah, we ain't even started yet. Amen. Yeah, we never even started Sunday school. We never even got to it. Amen. Hallelujah. But, uh, no, I'll take care of that tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, do have never, several announcements, but I cannot do this, leave the church without taking up the Sunday morning off. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to do that. So uh, let's have our ushers up here. Amen. Let me do make a couple of announcements. I want to thank God for our, everybody that uh, that cooked desserts for the community revival on Friday night. Uh, desserts were very good, and we had soup, had a great time, a fellowship. But we as a church will also be going into revival this week as well. Starting on Wednesday night, it'll be the first annual traveling revival, and we won't be here on Wednesday night, but we will be here on Friday night. We'll be starting our traveling revival on Wednesday night, and our first service will be at West End Baptist Church, and the directions are back there. That's in the city of Athens. The directions are back there on the board if you need them, and on Thursday night, we'll be at McMahon Calvary Baptist Church, and that's when I'll be preaching, and then on Friday night, we'll be here and that will be Brother Mark Schlager preaching that night. So we want everybody to come out and uh, be in the meeting. And then on Saturday night, we'll be at uh, Parkway Baptist Church. And Brother John Crisp will be preaching that night. And so uh, four nights of revival this week and looking for God to do things. And Susan's already, cause, and I'll make this announcement, an hour before each service at each church. And y'all going to really like this. An hour before each service that, that this week, each church is going to be providing meals, snacks, or what so what Susan's already got with the ladies, what we're providing on Friday night. So come and be ready to eat at 6 o'clock every one of those nights. And then we're going to fellowship, and then we're going to go up, go into those uh, churches and have a worship service, a revival, and that's what the other preachers wanted to do. And I said, well, hey, we like to eat, so that'll be fine with us. So... Uh, Friday night, Susan's already spoke with that, about that. And then on May 31st, amen, the five churches of the community revival will be at Calvary Baptist Church to do a benefit. 
for Brother Fred Wilson. How many of y'all know Brother Fred Wilson? Raise your hand. Wonderful man of God, wonderful preacher. He's put up tents all over. He's had a bad accident, and they're going to have a benefit singing for him. And Calvary Baptist Church is going to be the host of that. And uh, what we're going to do tonight, Miss Felicia, what I'd like to do is take up a love offering for him tonight as a church if some people can't go. Um, and then we'll have it sent. You can take care of that when we're over there on that Saturday night on May 31st. So don't forget about that. Then Bible school, June 9th through the 13th. Amen. I still need a, a nursery teacher. I still need a seven to nine year old teacher. And I believe Brother Austin said he wanted to be part of the teens class this year. So I'll need somebody in there with him. I think Stacy's going to be the assist in our tour guide. So, uh, so uh, we, if you want to teach Sunday school, there's an opportunity. Uh, still a lot of things to do uh, for Bible school this year. All right? All right. Anything else that I missed? Amen. I do want you all to continue to pray for families that have lost loved ones this week. Pray for Brother Kenneth's family. Continue to pray for Bert and Helen's family. Appreciate all the ladies cooking for them this week. I know that, that y'all uh, did a great job and they always do. Amen. And uh, Brother Roy Hogan paid y'all a compliment on Friday night as we were walking through the food line. He says, I'm going to tell you, preacher. And I said, what's that, Brother Roy? He says, I've never seen a spread like I saw out there on that New Year's night. Amen. And I said, you won't either. I said, I said, I didn't get, I did, I said, I didn't get fat by accident. <laughs> Amen. But uh, thank you all so much for everything that y'all do here at the church. Are y'all glad you come this morning? Amen. 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 All right, let's bow our head. Brother Ronnie, you pray for the offering this morning. Amen. 